there, Lindsay here, the Frugal Crafter. Today we're gonna make a wreath, or we're gonna we're gonna attempt to, guys. I haven't made a wreath in years. I got real burnt out on wreaths a few years ago, um, and I never felt like I made a wreath that I ever really, really loved. So, except for the evergreen wreath that I made out of actual boughs, I really like that. Um, so we're gonna try to make an autumn wreath with paper from an old book, and we're gonna do that together. So. Um, Join me for this adventure, will you? <laughs> We're gonna use some dyes. I've had this dye for a few years. This is the large um, tatter floral dye. And then at a thrift store a couple weeks ago, I found a, the smaller dye to match that. And then I also found some different layered flowers. I had this old daisy dye. And I found this leaf dye at that thrift store, and then I also had those leaves. So basically what I've done already is I have cut a bunch of these out of different uh, sheets of paper. So what I did was I found an old book that I actually, I got this from a bargain bin for like 50 cents. I tried reading it. It was a big bore, and uh, I'm not going to tell you what it is. So, um, so hopefully don't offend anybody who likes that book. Um, I'm going to take out four sheets of book page here. Just tear it out like that. Paperbacks were great because you can tear them out really well. And I apologize if anybody is triggered by that, but um, this book is going to get used for something instead of just rotting in, you know, in a pile somewhere. So just put your, somebody asked me how to use the thick dies because they saw me um, share them on my thrift store haul. And um, I thought, well, hey, here's a good opportunity. So use your die cutter machine and most die cutters will have a thick enough space for this to go through and you put a pad underneath a cutting plate underneath your die and a cutting pad on top and then you crank it through and that's all there is to it now my die cutter is really old it's probably about i'm um, old for you know craft tools it's probably like i would say 15 or 16 years old. Now I'm taking these pieces of flowers and stuff. I'm just putting in there. I can do four of each thing at a, four sheets at a time. So it really makes quick work of this. I'm just going to go ahead and get another one out of the same sheet of paper. So we don't waste. Oh, I feel like I'm going to sneeze probably because I'm, you know, cutting old book pages and there's probably book dander. Oh, book dander. What is it? I don't know. It doesn't, actually doesn't smell like an old book, but... I feel, feel like I'm gonna sneeze. I've been doing this for quite a while, cutting out these suckers, so uh, and I hasn't felt sneezy until I <laughs> until I turn on the camera. Um, it's probably the fumes actually from my spray inks. I've been using distress inks to uh, to spray. So you get a bunch of those. We're just gonna we're gonna chuck them in here. Okay, so that's how you use the die cutter machine. So this, like I mentioned, 15 years old, still going strong. This is an Ellison Big Shot. Now the Sizzix company bought the Ellison company um, after I got this machine. So I don't know if the Sizzix Big Kicks are as good as these, but they're supposed to be the same model. Um, I don't know. You can let me know if you've had good experience or bad experience with the Sizzix Big Kicks. Because uh, that's the only one I've had. It's worked and, and lasted. So that's... Um, that's all I've needed. So now I had these little flower stamens, these are some wires with little beads and stuff on the end in my stash for a long time. And I thought it would be a wonderful use to make some flowers with these. So I've got all my little flower pieces here. I just have them kind of like between a few trays just so I can kind of see the variety that I have. And there's a couple ways you can do this. So the most simple way is just to find some different flowers and stack them up. Now I'm pretty sure I bought these at a thrift store, not a thrift store, a yard sale. Um, many years ago, so the floral tape on them is kind of starting to come off, so hopefully they stick together as I'm doing this. And you can just simply stack up some flowers and you will get a fairly three-dimensional flower. Just make sure you only have one one layer as you do that or you're going to go through your flowers really quick. Now another tip I have would be to cut as many of these, or cut more than you think you're going to need, because um, you don't have to stop and start cutting. This way you can get all your die cutting done, you can put your machine away, and then you can get all the stuff you need for the next the next step. You know, it just makes sense to do it kind of in a in a batch fashion. Oh, and if you like tear a petal off, don't worry about it because by the time you get things all like built up, you're not gonna notice that there's missing a petal. You can, you know, you're gonna be adding lots of these flowers to give you some nice volume. So don't worry about that. Or if you rip one off when you're making it, don't worry about that either. Just have fun and and enjoy the process. I mean, rather than throw it away, you might as well just put another one on there, right? You might as well just layer two. Old book pages are great because they're very porous. The um, 
the pages. I mean, like, I'm not expecting this to last a million years either, guys. I'm gonna put this up. I'm gonna hang it up. Maybe next year I'll want to do something different. Maybe I'll keep it for a few years. Maybe it'll dry out and get all brittle and I'll take it off the form and use the form for something else. So, you know, don't think everything you make has to be precious and last a million years because it doesn't. I'm A lot of the reasons I've made in the past I have gotten tired of. Although I did like my, um, my Christmas ornament wreath. I like that one a lot. I like the one that I glued. All the wreaths I've known before. So you can find all those old wreath tutorials on my <laughs> YouTube channel if you're curious. I like the Christmas wreaths. I guess I should say my Christmas wreaths came out all right. Fall wreaths I generally have have uh, not really enjoyed afterwards. So I'm just fluffing here. I'm not doing anything fancy. Just fluffing up. And oh, you know what? I think I want to do some other daisies. Do I have any? That one's kind of nice. That one, that was a page that didn't have any words on it, but I don't think it'll matter. It's on the, it's towards the end. Towards the back. You're not going to see it. The, I like the book paper because, and this is paperback book paper, because it really takes, um, it takes ink really well. I don't think that one will show. Oh shoot, I should have put some of those really spiky daisies in before. Ah, that's enough on that one. Because it will really take, um, it takes ink well. So like whether you're using you know, distress inks or oxides or your homemade inks. It'll work. It'll work well. I do have a recipe on my blog for homemade inks and on my YouTube channel if you want to check that out using liquid watercolors. So there is some, just some basic flat ones. I've got a few of them here. You can see just, you know, stack up your flowers. That's all that is here is stacked flowers. See, they're kind of pretty. Now the other way you can do it is you can kind of roll your flowers a little bit. And um, let's see, one of the, I've sprayed some of these where I've, well, it's kind of a stack and roll combination. And so for that, we'll also start with another center, another little beaded center here. And you're going to find a flower that's something like this. You know, it's, it's just kind of like a, it's like a shape. It's not really petally. It's got more compact, compact leaves. And you're just going to go in and you're going to make a slit. And you're going to kind of roll it up a little bit. Yo, and you can cut this, the petals apart a little bit more if you want to. But you want to make kind of like a trumpet. And guys, I'm not like a huge paper flower maker. I, I've done more in the past, but I don't know. I think it's kind of difficult to mail cards with them on there, so I don't typically do it that much. So you can definitely find better tutorials than this for making rolled paper flowers. So I'm just going to cup that around like that and put a little glue on there. And I'm using hot glue because I have asbestos fingers and I'm used to uh, burning myself. So now I have no fingerprints or thumbprints and I have a nice thick calloused layer on my fingers. So I can handle that. It just, you know, I, I urge you to be careful and to not burn your hands off, but you know, my, uh, that ship has sailed for me. So, uh, I'm enjoying my years of asbestos hands and see, then you could do, you could actually stack one after you've done a roll one, then you can stack one. Then you can go to a bigger, a bigger petal. I've got so many lovely shapes in here. I can actually, you know, between all these different dyes, you know, I can actually, I can uh, get quite a variety of flowers. Now, I'm not even trying to make any flowers in particular. You could like get a special dye for like a carnation or for a rose or whatever. But and honestly, I have some of the Elizabeth Craft designs that make particular flowers. But man, they don't cut for four or six sheets of paper at once. So I'm grabbing these puppies where I can cut everything really, really fast. Maybe they would. Maybe they'd cut a few. But look at that. So we're going to keep on building around. These ones are real big. We'll save these for last. I was really excited to find the um, the smaller tattered florals die because I had the mini, which is not a thick die, and then I had the really long one. So it's great because then I've got that size in the middle for doing stuff like this. So I did make a little slit on that one, just wrapping it around. Now, since it's only going to go halfway around the flower, you've got, we've got like one space, one space, one, two, three, right? We'll do that one again, which I think, was it this one? Oh my goodness, I need to pay attention. I think it was. If not, it's close enough. Um, I'll just look in here a little bit more. Yeah, I think we're good. If not, you know, the world's going to keep spinning. It's, nobody's going to be like, hey, I am bothered by the fact that there's not enough petals there. So now we can kind of like stagger the next ones to go in between the gaps that we missed. I think this is a different size, but I'm not going to worry about it there. So we'll just kind of... That totally is a different size, guys. Okay, you know what? I'm going to get a completely different flower because that one's not working. Let's make a little slip there. We're going to uh, balance this out. 
there. Yeah, that's fine. <laughs> and the thing is, they got these lovely, all these lovely prints on here that are very distracting, so you can't really tell <laughs> if, uh, if something is where it shouldn't be or not. And here and there, I'll just put like a little dab of glue so that my thing doesn't unravel. Now, since we have these flower, these uh, stamens here, those are going to, we can wire these flowers onto our wreath form like that. If you've got a styrofoam wreath form, you can just hot glue them on there. That's going to really limit whether you could take that wreath apart and um, use the form again. But you may be a better, you may be a really expert wreath maker. You may make really beautiful wreaths that you wouldn't even dream of deconstructing. So, you know, that's, that's probably fine. I will probably, you know, we use it for a while, get sick of it, and make something else. So having a wire wreath form and having things wired onto it will actually be a little bit better. I feel like that's a pretty big jump. Ah, but I also think it's kind of okay. So, let's see. We'll twirl that one around. That is kind of a big jump. Should I try to find a smaller one? Hmm. This one would be... Is that the one I just used? Ah, I think that's the size I just used. Guys, you don't have to put too much much work in it we're not making you know we're not making wedding centerpieces for goodness sake i'm making <laughs> making something to go over my fireplace for a couple months um i will have a bunch of leftovers so when i have a bunch of leftovers i'll either use up the rest in greeting cards or um i'll give them to friends that don't have a die cutter that might want to use these or i'll donate them to the library for their craft days with the kids and um so they don't get to they they don't go to waste. But we're we're doing a recycling project anyway. It's not like um it's not like this was having some big use beforehand. So this one is a little bit of a oh goodness gracious. Holy moly. Ah that was hot. <laughs> oh, maybe my fingers aren't as asbestos asbestos -y as I thought. Um okay, so we're gonna make a few of those. <laughs> And when that's done, we are going to color our leaves. So, and our and our and our things. So I did cut out a bunch of leaves. They're in a tray on the other side of the room, of course. But I took them and I put them in a shoebox and I sprayed them with a variety of different inks. So that's where they are. You can set them to dry somewhere on a piece of wax paper or this is just a little piece of screening. It was actually sold at a scrapbook store, like for making like mixed media scrapbook pages a long time ago. It probably was like, you know, five cents of like hardware cloth, but I probably paid like $3 for it. <laughs> I'm finally learning, guys, finally. Um, so you want to go ahead and color your leaves. These were part of the that big long tattered flowers one, but I also had some leaves ones. I did a bunch of different ones. I'll show you the other ones I did too. Hang on a sec. Here's I did some like you know fall colors, very muted tones, but I thought that would be really pretty with the uh, with the, doing a wreath like this. Um, so just a variety of different dyes it doesn't really matter the manufacturer. I think most of these are Sizzix, but um, it doesn't matter. You know, just uh, just spray them with whatever you have, or you can rub ink on it with an ink pad. It doesn't really matter. We have this. I cut a bunch of them just so I could either use them for the crafts or I just want to make sure I had enough so I didn't have to stop once I've gotten all inky and, and whatnot. All right, so now we're going to take our paper flowers and add some color to them. And I decided to stay in a muted palette. So here's some that I already colored. I think I showed you those at the beginning. So I've got orangey, red, and reds, and violets. And I might need to secure with a little more hot glue, but that's what we've got so far. And then I use a shoe box for uh, a spray protectant. It's designer, it's Nike, as you can see. And I've got my spray ink. So try to like come up with a color palette that is, you know, gonna work together. So try to keep remixing your colors or kinda kinda use the same colors over and over again. Things over here. Oh my gosh. I thought it was so organized, but I'm still running all over the place. Alright, so I thought these little guys here, it would be pretty to do these, maybe yellow. I like yellow. So I've got this uh, fossilized amber, and I just go like that, but yeah, I really got to shake the bejesus out of these sometimes. And you could be, you could let as much or as little of the book pages show through as you want for a little bit of um, two-tone. I will often just kind of like hang them upside down a little bit and just kind of give them like fluff them out. And plus this moisture will help the pages curl a little bit. We'll kind of fluff them a little bit and then do a little
It'll also help the middles kind of like match a little bit if they were a weird color because you got them at a yard sale and you know you got some really bizarre old 70s colors. By the way, there's a cancer warning on these sprays, so I don't know. <laughs> Maybe you should wear a mask. We all have them now, right? I think it's just one of those like, you know, blanket warnings they got to put on everything now, but just, you know, I thought I ought to say, because look at this, I got it all over my hands. Right over, I got, all, I got it all over my hands on my hot glue burn, so I'm probably a goner, but save yourselves. Oh, we got another one of those right here. I like the way this one came out better. I think I had more like little daisies on that one. Oh, I'm getting it all over my ring, jeez. I hope this is, this is full, well, it's water reactive. It really should wash off pretty well. <laughs> Okay, now we get these guys. Let's see. Um, let's do, maybe we'll do one purple and one kind of red. So let's do the red one first. We'll do uh, fire brick. Ooh. Now, ooh la la, that's got some, that's got some punch. And let's do a little abandoned coral. I like that one too. And, you know, I'm really happy because this is getting, using these distress plates. I, okay, I really love the distress oxide pads. And they're a lot of fun. I find them to be very versatile. Um, so I'm like, well, I'm going to get some of the sprays at the stamp show. So I went and I bought, a, I bought a bunch. Oh my gosh, I bought, I don't know, probably a dozen of the sprays. And then I saw the cancer warning on them. And I'm like, oh, now I don't feel like I want to use them. Now I'm kind of afraid to use them. But then I talked to a chemist friend of mine. He's like, that's just, that's fine. That's just, uh, oh, I want my gold spray. He said that was just the just what they had to put on there for like legal disclaimers they want to sell in California and stuff. So I felt a little bit better about that. But still, I mean, I got I haven't gotten the habit of really using them. And now let's do purple. This is just um this is like the iridescent blick liquid watercolor mixed with water. And when I make my own sprays, that's what I use. I use the blick liquid watercolor and water. And sometimes I'll put some mica or put some of their iridescent watercolors in there too if I want it sparkly because I find the powdered mica, mica, eh, mica, oh my gosh, what am I, from Maine? Um, I find that it gets more, um, uh, it gets more cloggy than if I use the iridescent watercolor. So that's why I do that. And then this one we're going to do orange, more or, or no, we're going to do this one from purple. You know what, we could try, do that have, do I have sparkle in that one? Oh gosh, I don't see it. I don't think I did. Okay, so let's not change the plan. Let's stick with what we've been doing. My finger is burned. I can feel it. <laughs> I somehow managed to not have one spot on my finger that's my thumb that is the standing of burns. Ugh. Get out the lava soap tonight, friends. Ooh, that's pretty. I like that. I think I'll meet one a little bit more. I think I did spray some gold on this one. Oh, that's coming apart. I gotta have a little more hot glue on that. Um, yes, where's my gold? Back to the gold here. You could also do a little bit of like brown walnut ink or something. Cause like, I mean, I haven't used this in like probably over a year and it still sprays, it doesn't clog. I probably will rinse out my uh, nozzles on these different guys. Do I want to try? I kind of want to try this. Might be a mistake, but let's give it a whirl. I'm probably gonna have to make more flowers. I don't think I have enough. Hmm, that's kind of pretty. All right, so now we got to let all this dry. Tell you the truth, I'm probably going to make some more because I don't think I have enough. But then when we come back, we're going to put this on the wreath form along with our beautiful leaves. So uh, and I'm going to re-glue some of these and hopefully not burn my hands off. So we'll see you in a few minutes. Okay, here we go. Flowers are made. They're a little damp, but I think we can work with them. And uh, I think I've got six big ones and six little ones. So I'm going to start by taking one of these big ones and just wiring it to where one of these things are here, one of these braces on my wire form that I got at the Dollar Tree. I've used it for other things. You can see I've got some wire on it right now. I should probably clip that off, actually. <laughs> so prepared. My finger is totally killing me. Well, not really. I got a little blister there, though. I know. I shouldn't have been bragging about asbestos fingers because I clearly don't have them. All right, so I think I'm going to try to get these, get this, get one of the bigger flowers on the top. The second rung in from the center. Oh, maybe I want to actually know. Let me go right here in the middle. So between the two larger areas. And I don't know. I've got 12 flowers here. So hopefully this will be full enough. But if not, then I've also got a bunch of leaves. And I also just can like add in just the plain flowers too, I think. So I'm going to start with the big ones. 
and let's wire them on. I'm just wrapping them around the center tine there. There's probably a better way to do it, but that's what I'm gonna do. I okay, have them pretty well spaced out. Actually, I'm gonna just wrap them around a couple times. Just don't want to tear anything because the paper is still a little damp, but I, I was impatient. I want to get this done. I started off with such like ambition and ideas for a project, and then as it goes on, I get kind of like, oh, why did I start this? <laughs> Let's do a purple one next here. Actually, with these damp though, I can kind of uh, mold them a little bit too, I think. Gosh, I hope this is cute. You know? <laughs> I hope the colors look good. I have very kind of like muted earthy tones in my living room, so I'm gonna hang this over the fireplace, and it's a brick fireplace, so I think it'll look good. It'll look traditional. And this one I just made, so this one's pretty damp, but I think it'll be fine. It will dry probably a little bit lighter. It's a little darker than the other two, but I think it's just because it's damp. Also, it looks like I might have made that one a little bit bigger, but no matter. Okay, so then I want to do these in between. I feel like I got another burn. I feel like I've got several burns on my fingers. <laughs> Now these are going to slide around, but that's okay because then I can shift it exactly where I want and then I can glue in some leaves. They can kind of tack them in place, I think. I don't know, guys. <laughs> hope the counter isn't too distracting. I'm filming in the old space today. Where we do all of our videos. Because I've got the big table so I can... And I can access it on all sides. I can go all the way around the big table and I can, uh, you know, I can spray over here. I can die cut over there. I've just got a lot more space than I do in the office. So it's better for these bigger, I'm not, but it's these bigger projects. I'm leaving some of the wire tails kind of just long because I might need to wrap them around or I might want to move things around a little bit. It's so floppy. I don't feel like this should be this floppy. Oh, I'm glad I don't have to make wreaths for a living. Every time I make a wreath, that's like what I think. It's like, I'm so glad I don't have to do this for a living. Even if I'm doing like an evergreen wreath and it's coming out really well, it's like, man, I would not want to do this for a living. Or I would want, to. they would be the most expensive wreaths ever. <laughs> I have cousin, a cousin who makes Christmas wreaths. And her mother used to do it uh, every Christmas when we were kids. All right, what do we got here? Oh, this is. Oh, this isn't the wrong one here. What did I do there? I'm gonna see if I can hoist that up a little bit. All right, so this is what we got so far. You know, actually, I don't think it's that bad. But I'm definitely going to need to flush, to flush this out a little bit. So if I want to glue more wreaths on and I want to glue the, or I want to glue more like leaves onto the flowers and stuff, they're going to have to be dry, I think, because I don't think the glue will stick. So I'm going to let this dry. I'm going to let the flowers dry up all the way and let my leaves dry up all the way. And I'm debating whether or not want to, whether or not I want to spray some of these other petals. And maybe just make some really simple little flowers that I can tuck in. I'm going to have to have a think on this, guys. Um, gosh, I wish I could get my camera further away so you could see all of that. I'm zoomed out as far as I can. Um, yeah, I'm going to think on this a bit. And then when we come back, we'll, we'll see what I've decided. Okay, day two on the wreath making project. Um, so I took a break yesterday. I didn't, uh, I was just was frustrated. I didn't know where to go. Um, so then what I did actually last night was I made a bunch more flowers, just white ones, um, just stacked ones that I can kind of floof up a little bit. And I'm going to start adding these around. I'm hoping that I can bulk up things enough. I actually also thought about maybe doing some ribbon on the outer 
like on the outer rim and kind of letting it floof back. So I've got that option. I might do that. I'm not sure. But for right now, I'm just going to start adding some of these little white flowers in and hopefully it'll look good. I really don't want to ink these up and wait for them to dry, but I can always give it a few puffs of, uh, of the spray ink when I'm done if I feel like it needs it. So I'm just going to just loosely put these on. I can tighten up the wires afterwards. I'm going to see if I can fill this up. I'm not going to make you watch that entire process though because that would be very tedious for you. So we will see you when we're back and um, I'll contemplate putting ribbon on this outer ring. I think I'll just try to not attach anything to the outer ring for right now in case I need to do that for some body. But um, that's where we're at. Okay, you know what? This is actually showing up quite nicely. Um, I've got a couple flowers left. I actually took the bigger, um, some of those bigger die cuts and I just kind of folded them up in case I needed to like stick them in somewhere for some extra bulk, but I don't think I'm going to need to. Finally, this thing seems to be coming together. I did use, I realized also with this frame that when I went, I was just trying to put them on one time because I thought, well, that way I can like uh, have a little more versatility and move them around. But if I kind of wrap the wire around two of the tines, then I got a much more stable thing. I was I was uh, thinking that I might need that outer rim to do ribbon on it, which I really didn't want to do because I'm kind of not a huge fan of the ribbon wreaths, mostly because I had to do a lot for a couple of the clients that I that I had once. And um, I think it kind of burnt me out on that. I'll show you the back just so you can kind of see what that looks like. Maybe I will put just some like, um, stick some pieces in like that with some hot glue if, if I feel like I need it. But I also have all of these, um, I wish I could zoom out more. Uh, I also have all of these leaves and stuff too that I can tuck in here and there. And I'm going to do that with a hot glue. So let's do that together. Then we can decide whether we want to have any more. I think when I put the leaves in, the nice thing about that will be that I can, I can have them kind of overlap some of the white, the white flowers so that I've got a little more color in there. But the, and I, I'm actually liking the little white flowers because I can move my hot glue stand over. Um, I'm liking the white flowers because you know how I like sprayed everything after I made it? Cause I wasn't sure which I was going to like better doing. And since I did that, I think that's, uh, I think that's good because then I can, then I can have like white, like it's on purpose, not like I was lazy. So it's, you know, when things look like it's on purpose versus you just being lazy, it's always a better, it's always a better look. And I can also cover up you now like this here. I think I might actually put a little hot glue there and try to tack that to another flower. I'm glad this came out because I was just like really bummed out. I was thinking, man, I've wasted all that time. I mean, I wasn't out of a lot of supplies because I mean, I used die cuts that I already had and I used, um, you know, I used leftover, a leftover wreath form that I can always take apart. Now here, I'll just pick whatever side is prettier and try not to burn myself. These pages are really thin, so I gotta be careful. And it's, they're kind of delicate, so once I lay it down, I've got to be fairly certain that's where I want it to be, you know? And I'm not going to, like I mentioned, this is not going to be a, you know, a forever wreath. This is going to be something that I put up for a while, and then, you know, that's that, you know. Although, I will say, the more you get hot glue going on something, the more you get, uh, you get durability and, uh, and bolt from it. And I'm glad I got to use these Distress Oxide sprays a little bit more because, you know, those I did pay. I don't know if I paid full price. I think there was a deal at the stamp show when I got them, but still, you know, I kind of went whole hog on them. I've got a good base one I can glue to, then I'll kind of put the glue on the bottom and try to grab it on the flowers underneath. I think that's going to add to the overall stability. In fact, I think I might put some flat, some glue on that side and try to tuck it down. This glue gun stand, by the way, it's by Totally Tiffany. It was a gift um, from a subscriber a few years ago, and that has been so lovely. That's something I probably would never would have bought myself, but um, I use it. Anytime I use a hot glue gun now, I use that. It is Wonderful. I wonder if there's a better way to glue these down. I'm just afraid I'm going to burn myself. And I feel like I should be sharing better glue gun etiquette. 
I have two blisters on my fingers right now from hot glue yesterday. And don't you hate it when you when you when you burn yourself because then like whenever you wash your hands or anything like that, you do anything with hot water afterwards. It just stings so bad. <laughs> I brought all my flower pieces up last night. So that's why I say cut extra because, you know, you never know if you're going to need more. You usually will need more than you think you're going to. Um, but I just, I brought my, um, I brought all the pieces upstairs and I sat down with a movie. There was a movie on TV and I'm just like, I am going to just make a bunch of flowers. And I was so frustrated <laughs> by this project at that point. I'm just like, I'm just going to, hopefully this will make it better. And I can salvage it in the morning. Oh, I'm liking this though. I think this is going to be quite lovely. I'll have to share a picture of it once I have it up. Oh, look at this one. This one ended up being one with no printing on it. I think I'll save that one for something else or maybe I'll use it if I need to at the end. So I'm just going to continue gluing these down and I will, I'll show you how it turned out when we're all done. Hot. <laughs> All right, we are finished with this. I did end up taking some of the little pieces. Uh, this, these were like the flowers that I kind of scrunched up and I would kind of scrunch them up and put a little glue on them and tuck them here and there wherever it felt like I needed a little more bulk. But um, I'm really happy with the way this came out. I blasted it with my heat gun to take away any of the glue strings. I'll insert a photo of this up over my mantle. And um, I don't have my mantle all ready for fall yet, but you'll at least be able to see this hung up. This is the back. If I flip it over, it's very lightweight. Um, I definitely can take it apart and reuse the, the form again if I want to. If I get a crazed idea that I want to make another wreath, which I tend to do every couple of years. <laughs> Although maybe I'll remember this experience of the burned fingers and uh, inhalation of the potential cancer sprays and change my mind. But uh, but there you are. Here you can see one of the ones that I tucked in there. Now that, I don't like the way that looks very much, so I think I will maybe add another little leaf on top or something like that and glue that down. Um, it's really fun. Actually, once you, once you get past the, you know, making all the flowers, actually putting it together is not too bad. Um, so hopefully you found this inspiring and you might give something like this a try or learn from my mistakes and realize it's not the craft for you. Either way, I hope you enjoyed this video. Thanks for watching. Please give me a thumbs up before you go. Until next time, happy crafting.